Welcome to my lecture online. Now let's do some that are a little bit more complicated like a block on an inclined plane. We're going to start off by setting the coefficient of friction between the block and the inclined plane equal to zero. At least that makes it a little bit easier. We'll see the approach and then the next example will actually cause some friction to exist between the block and the plane and you'll see how we need to apply that. So what do we do here? We need to identify all the forces on the block. Well, we'll start out by the usual. We have the force of gravity pulling straight down, which is mg. And of course, since we're on an inclined plane, we'll have the perpendicular component, which is mg times the cosine of theta. And we'll have the horizontal component, which is mg times the sine of theta. Likewise, we'll take this force here and we'll split it up into two components, one component which is parallel to the plane and one component which is perpendicular to the plane. So this here would be the component perpendicular to the plane and this here would be the component parallel to the plane. This here, let's see, if we call this angle here theta, which is the same as this angle theta over here, then the adjacent component here, this would be considered f times the cosine of theta and the perpendicular component would be opposite to the angle, so this would be f times the sine of theta. Now, of course, if we now look at the surface between the block and the plane, there are now two forces pushing down on the plane. The first one is mg cosine theta, which is the perpendicular component of the weight, but then also this component of the force applied on the block is also pushing down on that plane, so with a different color. Uh, let's see here. Now let me put it like this. So we also have this component right here, which is F times the sine of theta, which causes a normal force to push back in this direction. So there's a normal force. And in this case, the normal force would be equal to the sum of the mg cosine of theta caused by the vertical component of the weight plus the vertical component of the force, which is F times, I shouldn't say vertical, I should really say perpendicular component to the plane, so that would be F times the sine of theta. Now since there's no coefficient of friction between the block and the surface, we don't really need the normal force, but I just wanted to calculate it so you can see how that's done, because later on we're going to need it. To find the acceleration, and assuming that there's enough force here to cause the block to accelerate upward, we're going to assume that the acceleration is in this direction. We can then say that the acceleration is equal to the net force acting on the block divided by the mass of the block. And of course, the net force can be defined as all the forces aiding the acceleration minus all the forces opposing the acceleration divided by the mass. When we say aiding and opposing, aiding means the force in the same direction as the presumed acceleration. Opposing means the force in the opposite direction from the assumed acceleration. Acceleration then becomes the force to aid acceleration would be the mg sine theta right here. Oop, no, oop, not mg sine theta. That's, that belongs to this force. I'm looking for this component. Sorry, so this here is this force. This here is this force pushing the block up, so the aiding force would be F times the cosine of theta. And let's see, is there anything else? Then we have this force here, which is opposing force. That's the component parallel to the incline caused by gravity that would be finding the acceleration, opposing acceleration, mg times the sine of theta. And I believe those are the only two forces that are affecting acceleration. This one is aiding the acceleration, this one is opposing the acceleration. So this force minus this force, and divide that by the mass. So the acceleration equals, we have 60 newtons times the cosine of 30 degrees, minus the mass of the block, times acceleration due to gravity, times the sine of 30 degrees, and the whole thing divided by the mass of the block, which is 5. So we have the cosine of 30 times 60, and subtract from that 5 times 9.8 times 0.5 for the sine of 30 equals, and divided by 5 equals, we have 
5.49 meters per second. There we go. And so that will be the acceleration of the block up the incline because it does look like this component of the force is larger than the component of the weight pulling it down due to gravity. So we have an acceleration of the block up the incline. Now our next example will be a similar example, but now we're going to have a coefficient of friction in between there, between the block and the incline. And then we'll see how that complicates things even more. That's how it's done.